Hey again, everybody. Welcome to case study number 47. I am pregnant and bleeding. Bread and butter OB stuff. You will get a question on this. This is something you can see in the ER. You can see in the clinic. You do not have to be an obstetrician to see this stuff. So it is imperative that you understand this stuff. And I will do a full lecture on this in the coming days. I will be putting it up. So stay tuned. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the i button on the upper right hand corner. I really appreciate all the contributions that I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already stepped up to donate. And if you haven't yet, uh, you can subscribe to my channel and you will get updates as I put more and more videos up. I'm trying to put videos up now every day, every other day. So uh, go ahead and subscribe and you'll get alerts every time I put a new video up. Okay, we got a 27-year-old Hispanic woman, G3P2, presents to the clinic complaining of mild spotting in her underwear, which she noticed when she woke up this morning. Uh, she's currently 10 weeks pregnant based on confirmatory ultrasound performed two weeks ago, which revealed an intrauterine singleton pregnancy. She's not had any symptoms outside of the ordinary and says she's concerned because she's never had this with either of her previous pregnancies. She's an elementary school teacher and denies strenuous work. She's sexually active with her husband, but they have not had sex since she learned that she was pregnant. She denies smoking, alcohol, drug use, past medical history is significant for migraine, which she takes sumatriptan as needed, and she also takes prenatal vitamins, and her vitals are within normal limits. Okay, so this is first trimester bleeding, and normally we go on to do our physical exam, but I want you to know what your differential is, just right off the bat. So our differential is threatened abortion and miscarriage. Those are the big two. So we're going to see what these are. But basically, threatened abortion means you have a live fetus and a closed os, but you got bleeding. So it's just bleeding, right? Spontaneous abortion means that you're going to have a miscarriage. Now, where you are in the process will dictate whether it's inevitable, incomplete, or complete. And then we have these other things, molar pregnancy, an ectopic pregnancy, or a cervical polyp. And we'll go into what those are later. All right, our physical. Everything is normal. Um, however, her genital exam is what we're really going to focus on. So she's got normal appearing genitalia. That's important because you can get bleeding from, you know, let's say you uh, hooked your zipper the wrong way in your vulva. You know, that can cause bleeding. So trauma. Uh, rough sex can do it. Um, she says she hasn't been having sex, but, you know, uh, it's something you need to consider if she didn't say that. Okay, we see normal vaginal mucosa, and this is so important, a closed, normal-appearing cervix. So the os is closed, and that's going to be important when we go through a differential. There's a small amount of dark blood on the vaginal floor, but everything else is normal. So what do we do for our workup? We need to get a quantitative beta-HCG, and note I say quantitative here, not qualitative. Qualitative is yes or no. Is she pregnant or not? Quantitative helps us determine how is this pregnancy progressing, if at all. Um, so you'll do that by comparing it not only to the normal range for how far along she is, but also her previous and her future uh, readings. We're going to get a CBC because she's bleeding and a transvag ultrasound because this is the first trimester. That's the uh, diagnostic modality of choice to visualize the fetus. Quantitative beta HCG was normal for this point in her pregnancy, so that's good. CBC was within normal limits, and her transvaginal ultrasound showed an intrauterine singleton pregnancy with a crown rump length of 3.4 centimeters. That's consistent with 10 weeks. Do not worry about knowing crown rump length. And most importantly, cardiac motion was appreciated at 147 beats per minute. So she has got a normal pregnancy. The only issue is she has bleeding. So the diagnosis here is a threatened abortion. That's exactly what a threatened abortion is. It's bleeding in the, unexplained bleeding in the setting of a normal viable pregnancy. 50% of these women will go on to have a normal pregnancy and 50% will go on to have a miscarriage. Further workup, none. Don't need to do anything. Reassure her, send her off, and then she's going to come back for a repeat ultrasound and beta HCG. 
Um, that can be done within days. However, with this patient, because she's 10 weeks and X number of days along, she's going to be coming in anyway because we do first trimester labs at 11 to 14 weeks. So you could just recheck her then. It's fine. Uh, but these patients will need to come in. So if she was six, seven weeks along, we would recheck her in a few days. Okay, so what are these different types of quote-unquote abortions? Now, in medical terms, abortion means miscarriage. Now, elective abortion is where, you know, you go into Planned Parenthood and you decide to have your pregnancy terminated. But when we're talking about abortions in the context of not something you choose, what we're talking about is miscarriage. So remember, we have first trimester bleeding. The most important part of your physical exam is the speculum exam. And what we're looking at there is the os. Now, let's say the os is closed. That's a good thing. Okay, we don't want the os to be open. Okay, if the os is closed, then the next thing we do is we look at that transvag ultrasound. If the transvag ultrasound shows a viable fetus, then what we have is a threatened abortion, just like in this patient. If the transvag ultrasound shows a dead fetus, we'll just say non-viable, then what you're dealing with is a missed abortion. And a missed abortion um, basically means the fetus died, but you're not expelling it. You missed the abortion. And they can go on to spontaneously uh, abort. Uh, however, um, it's not guaranteed. So that's why we call it a missed abortion. Okay, now if you have an open os, then you know that you have a spontaneous abortion. The question now is what kind? So we look at a transvaginal ultrasound. If there is, um, if the fetus is completely there, so all tissue remains, then what you have is an inevitable abortion. It's gonna happen. The os is open, ready to expel, but it hasn't happened yet, but it's inevitable, right? If some remains, then what you're dealing with is an incomplete abortion. You've started, but you're not done. And if none remains, i.e. the uterus is empty, and assuming you're not dealing with the ectopic, um, then you have a complete abortion, okay? So that's the difference. And I will be doing a video on first trimester bleed and miscarriage, which will be coming out shortly. And I go over the management for all these things. So a threatened abortion, like I said, no passage of tissue, fetus is normal, os is closed. These are the different kinds of spontaneous abortions. We just went over those. Molar pregnancies is associated with significant nausea and vomiting. Why? Because these women have beta HCG levels through the roof. That's what causes morning sickness. So they're going to have really pronounced symptoms. And that can even be how they present. That don't even necessarily need to have bleeding. If you get a sano, you'll see a snowstorm appearance if you're dealing with a partial molar pregnancy. Um, and you may also see a uterus that's too large for its size um, or for, its, for how progressed you are in the pregnancy. Ectopic pregnancy, the classic there is a positive beta HCG, but no intrauterine pregnancy. So you must look elsewhere, start in the fallopian tubes, specifically at the ampulla. Cervical polyp, you see this mass protruding from the cervix when you do your speculum examination. They bleed like crazy, so that is certainly a possibility here, but we didn't see that. All right, so to recap, about 25% of women will have bleeding in the first trimester. Usually it's a threatened abortion. 50% of threatened abortions go on to be fine. Pregnancy will progress as normal. 50% will go on to have a spontaneous abortion. The workup is to get the quantitative beta-HCG, CBC, and the transvag ultrasound. Threatened abortion, remember, is bleeding only. The fetus is alive and well, and the os is closed. Half go on to have normal pregnancies, half go on to have miscarriage. The management is expectant. Um, with threatened abortion, watch and wait, recheck them in a few days. Spontaneous abortions can also be managed expectantly, but it's the woman's choice. If she wants to give nature a kick in the butt and get things going, you can give her misoprostol, it'll speed things along. Um, if she wants to have it taken out for whatever reason, you can do a DNC. Surgical management is always performed when medical management fails. You give her misoprostol, she's not doing anything. 
Or if she's unstable, if she's having really heavy bleeding, then you need to just go in and do a DNC at that point.